There are several of you that I haven't met, I know. I, I don't think we've met, right? We've not met. You did? Okay, I'm... I'm Mrs. McCarty, and this is my school. I started it, how, how many of you remember 9-11, when, when everything crashed? Anybody not know what 9-11 was? It, it was when the New York got hit by the planes and it killed so many people. Um, that made me really, really sad. Because um, I thought, you know, even those guys who crashed the planes, nobody wants to die crashing a plane if they would have known better. But they had so much hate. Their whole life they'd been really beaten up. And the people that trained them made them hate. Have you guys ever seen dogs that are trained to, be, to fight each other? You guys ever seen that? Yeah. You know, have you ever noticed that when they do that, the people are really mean and they're taunting these dogs all the time and trying to get them to to be in a dog fight? You've ever seen really mean dogs? The way they get them to be really, really mean is they keep kicking them and they keep hitting them and they keep taunting them and they won't feed them. And the dogs get so mad that they get more and more and more powerful and more angry and they just want to eat anything in front of it. And I'll, I'll tell you guys a secret. If you ever want to really be in charge of somebody, you act like a dog. And here's what dogs do. They lock eyes, like just lock your eyes with me for a minute. So here's what they do. So let, let's just pretend. Let's pretend you're a okay. There, let's say you're a really mean dog, okay? And so I'm a really mean dog. And so I want you guys to watch this because we're going to see what happens. Okay? All right, ready? <laughs> I'm meaner than he is! Okay, so here's how it works. Whichever dog looks down first is the dog that's nicer. But I'm not nice. Okay. Well, he's nicer than I am, because we just proved it. And so the, the truth is, I'm a pretty nice person, but if my back gets against the wall, I don't back down. And <clears throat> the problem with dogs is that it's really hard to get them to be nice again. Once they've been abused like that and mistreated like that, they sort of stay like that their whole lives, and usually they end up getting killed. And so if any of you ever adopted a dog out of the pound, out of the dog pound, you have. So they're kind of hard to work with for a while, aren't they? Because, because, um, because they don't trust anybody. Because once a dog has been put in a dog pound, they think that um, somebody's going to abuse them. And yeah. so they're kind of ready to you know, bite or they have a lot of problems. They, they aren't very socially acceptable. Well, so but getting back to 9-11, when I went through the tragedy of that, and I had a lot of friends that were there, I had one girlfriend who was on the, plane, on the train in the subway underneath where those towers were. And they heard they heard the planes hit those towers and they were in a subway in the dark, in the you know, in the like a cave, if any of you have ever been on a subway. And um, the terror that went through New York, the people that were afraid was just huge, but I couldn't help but feel really sorry for the people that crashed into that, those towers. Because I thought, you know, if those people had been raised with love and kindness and gentleness, they would have never crashed those planes into those towers. And when you look at how terrorists act around the world, the reason that they act so mean is because that's the way they've been brought up. How many of you know that I went to Africa last year? 
okay? I went to the place that has been in war for 30 years. 30 years. These people have been mean to each other, hurting each other's family, killing each other's children in front of each other for 30 years. These people have not known comfort. They've been every day not knowing, is their best friend going to kill them? Or is their best friend going to kill their children? Or are they going to be able to eat today? They've been fighting, fighting, fighting for a whole bunch of reasons. I can talk about Liberia someday if you want. But when we went over there to train 800 teachers, guess what? The first thing we had to talk to them about. Can anybody think? I'm sorry? Well, that's almost exactly right. So he said, what's your name? Robert. Robert Robert said watch your back and that's what the librarians were used to doing because they are afraid every single day because they know somebody's going to abuse them they know somebody's going to be mean to them I decided to open this school on what was once the worst drive by shooting street in Arizona that street by the garden was where more people were killed than any other street in Arizona can you believe that? Ten years ago. And the reason that I chose this location and the reason that I chose that, that, that street... Can you turn that off for me, Dory? The reason I chose that is because um, I felt so sorry for the people that lived down here and had to fight for whatever they were fighting for every single minute. There were drug wars going off in the, in the park. Little bitty kids were getting abused. People were getting shot for no reason. They, they got rid of the pool at the time. They brought the pool back, but they closed that pool because kids would be getting ready to jump in the water and be shot. And I just thought, you know, this is so ridiculous. If people only knew how to have fun in life, they would not be acting like this. Because no one wants to have a life they hate. There is not a person on the planet that loves to be miserable. Every single one of us want to be loved, we want to be appreciated, and we want to have a nice life. I'll bet at least half of you guys, if I was going to give my car away today, you'd want it, right? I said half. Maybe half of you don't like my car. The little white one. The little white BMW. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you, you probably you need a bigger car. But, but you know, um, we all want to have a nice life. We want to have somebody who loves us. We want to be able to eat, and we want to have fun with our friends and our family. The problem is, if you've been raised in a family that's mean to you every single day, all you want to do be is mean. That's all you want. Because that's all you know. And you are going to be mean to a person first to make sure that they're not mean to you and hurt your feelings. And what happens when you do that over and over and over is you just become a mean person. <coughs> and you become a person that's mean in Walmart or mean at the grocery store because you just hate your life. Your life sucks. Now, when I opened this school right after 9-11, you guys, I lost a lot of friends because now I was down here every single day and I couldn't go play with my friends. <coughs> I took all the money out of my bank account. Everything I ever had, everything I saved. I had three credit cards that each had a $10,000 limit. And I maxed, I went, got $10,000 out of each one of them to close the accounts. And I did it for one reason. I wanted to show you guys how to have a life you love. And I was willing to do everything to get it here. I brought my family in here. I brought the friends who would help me. A bunch of them wouldn't because they thought I was crazy. 
We have been going on now for almost nine years. I can tell you story after story after story about some kid who came in here angrier than you can even imagine and decided in one day they wanted to have a life they love. And they started learning about different things that we teach. This school is recognized by the United Nations, by countries all over the world, as being the best school on the planet. And by the grace of God, you guys are in it. For whatever reason, somebody picked you to show up at this school. And you're just lucky. There's not a private school on the planet that has better training than we do. There's not an expensive school on the planet. Harvard people want you kids in Harvard. Every single university, I spent quite a bit of time in England this year. Oxford is considered the top university in the entire world. They would have you all in it if they could. There's a spark missing though, you guys, and I'm really, really upset about it. The main reason Starshine is Starshine is because you guys are here to make a difference in each other's lives. It is your responsibility to make this world a better place. And that means you get yourself out of here, you get your rear in gear, and you help me in Africa. You help me in Afghanistan. You help me in Iraq. Because there are kids over there that are never going to have a chance to attend a school or to be where you are. I am teaching you things that was taught to me by the biggest bank. I used to work for AT&T as an executive. I used to always stay in presidential suites and hotels. I know the secrets of the rich and famous. And I'm willing to give those to you guys. I'm willing to say, here's how you can be happy. Here's how you can make a bunch of money. Here's how you can have a life that you love on some island somewhere. I'm willing to tell you everything I have ever, ever learned. Because I care about you as a human being and that I know that if you get around people who love you and care about you and support you, you're going to be an incredible human being. But at the end of the day, it's your choice. If you don't want to learn from me, if you don't want to learn from any of the people that you have around you that are giving everything, Mr. Rand came from another executive position at Intel. He doesn't need to be here. He could get any job anywhere for any amount of money. He's here for the exact same reason. I'm here for the exact same reason. Any of these adults are here because they believe in the power of a human being to change other human beings. And they're willing to give everything up to prove it. And we've proven it. We've had the toughest people. You guys have seen them come in here. That We had two this morning. That guy is one of the owners of the largest travel company on the planet. He could make any dreams come true, and he wants to. He wants to provide airline tickets and help for you guys to go anywhere you want in the world to help other people with schools. That's the kind of people that you have walking through here, willing to give you opportunities if you decide to show up. But at the end of the day, you have to be willing to go, okay, I think there is another way. I'm going to get out of the life I have that sucks. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn from you and your friends, and I'm going to go places like I ne never thought I could go. But about four years ago, you guys, I had a little nine, ten-year-old kid in here. And he cussed and was mean to everybody. Nine year old? Yeah. Shh, if you know, don't say. And, you know, I said to him, here's the deal. I don't have time to babysit. There are a whole bunch of people that want my help. They want it around the world in other schools. Kids call me all the time. Can you help me? 
and I'm willing to help you. I'm willing to help you figure out how to get a car. I'm, I'm willing to help you figure out your own company. I've set a lot of kids in here in their own companies. But I am not willing to babysit bad behavior. If you choose to act mean to somebody else just because that's how you feel, you guys all know you can stop your anger part of your brain by getting on one foot. You all know that trick. You can go, I'm going to get on one foot, I'm going to breathe and get this anger off of me. We've taught this to you over and over and over and over and over. It's a brain function that you get angry. And it's a brain fun function that you learned from your families. You learned how to get angry because you were an angry little kid. And it wasn't your fault. But now it is your fault if you choose anger over something else because now you know another way. You may have been caused anger by your family, but you're not caused anger in here. I have seen, I've been back here pretty much on site for the last several weeks, and I have seen some little bits of meanness, kind of like those two dogs, like, you know, I don't like you, or why don't you do this, or why don't you do that? Just this little tinge of meanness. And I am not going to see it. It's not starshine. We are not going to raise the next people in a war in Iraq, no. You guys are either standing for peace and are willing to teach love and peace to the person sitting next to you in class, that you're going to hold them up to be a better person because you care about them. If you are not willing to do that, you are not supposed to be in Starshine. Maybe your life is supposed to suck. Maybe you're going to live a whole life that you hate. That's your choice. You are in a place right now that is going to teach you how to be a wealthy, secure individual, if you want. We're not babysitting in here. And some of the stuff I've heard some people say to some people in the last few days have hurt my feelings so bad and have caused me to get angry to the point where I have to get on one foot. Because this work is hard, you guys. This work is really hard. When I used to have a job, I made a lot of money. And people were really nice to me, and they took me to fancy restaurants, and they sent me all over the world to speak in front of big groups, and I had a pretty easy life. This life, this work I do, a lot of people criticize it. They just don't think that kids can learn on their own. I think you guys are as smart. In fact, I told somebody yesterday at a meeting I was in, you want to find the smartest kids on the planet? Teach kids that have grown up in a tough life. They're the entrepreneurs because they had to figure out how to stay alive in their life. You take a kid that has been hurt for 10 years in their families and you turn them into an entrepreneur, you're going to see a millionaire overnight. Because these are the people that have had to struggle their whole life and try to figure out how to deal with life. Kids that have been raised in a really easy life, sometimes they get pretty lazy. And sometimes they're not that motivated to go ahead and do whatever they're going to do. I am willing to invest my time, money, my family, my friends. And so are all these guys willing to do the same thing but I'm not going to put up with bad mouths. I'm not going to put up with people who want to incite the next fight with two little dogs. I want you guys individually to come up and tell me and tell your teachers, hey, I want to go to Africa to help the kids over there. I want to go over to India. We've got 100 schools wanting to open in India. Those kids have nothing. You talk about having to live on the street and watch your backside, it's scary. Not me? No, India. Oh. So, 
I want this, whatever is going on in here between a few people, I know there's one kid that gets picked on a lot. There's a kid who has an anger problem in here. And everybody wants to see him go off all the time. Nobody's saying, hey, get on one foot and breathe. Just take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. You're going to be all right. You can learn a new way. Who's doing that for somebody else? Are you doing that for the little guys? Are you helping them when they have an anger problem out there on the playground? Go, hey, just stand on one foot and breathe. You're going to be okay. You guys are either here to help the human race go up or you're an energy suck and you want it to go down. And either way, it's going to work for you. You want to have a good life, you can have it. You want to have a bad life, you can have it. It's your choice. But you're not going to have it inside of Starshine. Because Starshine, the whole thing and every single person in it is about making the world a better place. If you're not willing to live that way your own life, if you're not willing to learn from me, I'm not your teacher then. Go learn from somebody else who has less success than I do. I don't care. You know what? You want to choose somebody that's going to beat you up over at Camelback High School or whatever other high school you guys came from? You want to feel bad in that school from somebody else? This is the United States of America. You're free. You're free to make your own choice in your own life. But if you're in Starshine, you stand for something. And that is to make the world a better place. It's the only reason I'm doing this. Because I want to see the kids. You know this woman who was in the school this morning? Did anybody get to meet her? You did? You didn't see her? She's going to come back next Wednesday. She grew up about a block from here. Her brother is uh, really struggling at Camelback. He's into gangs and lots of different really bad stuff because he's had a tough life and he's over at Camelback and a bunch of kids are teasing him all the time and he's kind of wannabe gang stuff and a lot of and he's just drowning because she didn't know a school like this existed. She's a multimillionaire and she can't figure out how to help her brother. I'm sorry? Well, you know, I know. I, I would do that, except here's the problem. This is what he reminded me of and why I wanted to, to acknowledge him for telling me the truth. Okay? The, um, the problem is that if you have been beaten up enough, if you've been abused enough, you don't want another school because you're angry about everything. Did you hear how angry he was about having to come over here to the school because his mom made him? What is one of our principles? Connect, don't convince, right? So you have a mom that grabs a kid who's already so angry from being beaten up their entire life. They're in a gang over at Camelback, so people are always abusing them. And then the mom goes and tries to rescue him and grabs him out of that school and goes, you're going to go over to Starshine? You get even madder. Because you cannot believe that anything's going to work. You just feel like your life sucks. And until you actually can see something else, until you can actually be around people that are helping you to see how many of you have a goal, I hope everybody. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody's hand should be up. How many people have a goal? Everybody's hand should be up. If not, you can come up here and we'll talk about it. Come up. All right. So everybody has a goal in here because that's what you're supposed to have. So everybody has pictures of what they want to attain in life, right, or next week or whatever. We've had miracle after miracle after miracle. We had two boys when the exact watches they put on their vision map one day later, by weird coincidence, they put the watch on their vision map. The next day, a guy came in, handed us two watches to give away to the kids, and we went, well, this is weird. So those two boys got those two watches within one day of putting them on their vision map. 
Just because that's the way life works. When you decide you want something, you get it. Good or bad, it still works. So, <clears throat> I want a commitment from, from these, all you guys, um, about how we're going to live or not live. And you don't have to give it to me right this minute, but one by one by one, I want you to come up and tell me that you're committed to what the mission of Starshine is about. And the bottom line mission of what it's about is we help kids to save themselves as fast as we can. We cannot save you, but we can give you the tools that you can learn to save yourself. And you can become all the energy of the very top martial artist. You know, how many of you have been here? I told you that I can teach you how to burst somebody's heart by, without touching them. But once you have that kind of knowledge, you can't use it for evil. Because if you use it for evil, then it comes back on you. That's the energy. It's real energy. How many of you guys have ever taken any Tai Chi or anything, anything like that? Well, that's where you learn that energy. Is that true? Isn't that true? And so that energy is in our hands all the time. And you can feel it. You've, you've done this with me before. Just for years. Yeah, he's been doing it with me for years. But you can actually, if you do that, and you've been concentrating for a while, and you've been working with it, you can feel that energy. Isn't that your heat? That's yes, like it is the, the heat, but you're electrical because you've got molecules, right? Yeah. And so every cell in your you body. Yeah. With your own hands. So yeah. That don't mean Same energy your body sets up. Yeah. There's uh, electrical energy that every single molecule, every single cell in your body has electrical energy. That's how your heart pumps without you telling it to. Your heart pumps because it's electrical because it knows to use that electricity to pump. And so even though your head, your brains are moving, your brain has a lot of electricity right here. If they take a picture, they can actually measure the electricity around your brain. 50 times that around your brain is coming out of your heart, which is why Mrs. Saren is doing the heart math with you guys. 50 times the electrical energy output comes out of your heart. So when you put your hands, your hands have a lot of electrical energy. You put your hands together and then they're in front of your heart. It'll automatically calm you down. But the more you do that, the higher that electrical vibration vibrates. And so the more you concentrate on that, the stronger, 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 stronger power you've got. You've got like this electrical generator in your own body. 